Hello, book two. It's Tuesday, and that means Tag Tuesday, and I have a tag for you. Sorry about the abrupt switch in technology. I usually film nowadays on my iPhone, uh, but it is it was snatched away from me and is rudely in use. So I'm using my, my uh, trusty old laptop, the thing that I've used for innumerable videos in order to make this one, uh, to do a tag, and then I'll try and get the phone back. Uh, and I have a tag for you today that I was inspired to make by a recent video by Olive, at a book Olive. She recently did a video, I'll leave it linked down below, a great video called My Favorite Fiction Books. And I watched it and thought it was wonderful and wasn't, as anybody who watches her channel will be, I wasn't surprised by what her number one pick was. But I loved hearing her thoughts on uh, the seven books that she picked. And when I was finished with it, I had a feeling that is not unfamiliar to me. I thought, that was great. I bet I could weaponize that into a tag. Uh, and so I did. <laughs> this is the My Favorite Fiction Books tag. Uh, and although Olive's video was wonderful and nice and friendly and really smart and conversational, what it lacked were restrictive repressive rules. So I have plenty of those for you as well. Uh, she chose seven novels. Uh, Margaret the First by Daniel Dutton. The Uprooted by Naomi Novik. The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara, and The Rules of Civility by Amor Tolles. And The Rules of Civility, as will come as a surprise to no one, was her number one pick. The other books weren't ranked, but the, her number one pick was her favorite fiction book. Uh, and I listened to her on these things. I've heard her talk about a lot of these books before. Uh, I was encouraged as i often am by how little disagreement there was the only book on here that i disagree about is the night circus i know that it's a beloved favorite people clasp it to them i've never seen why everything else on this list i can perfectly understand uh so i took that list i rolled it around in my mind a little and i came up with, with a bunch of fascist rules <laughs> that you almost follow when you do the my favorite book fiction books tag uh and i i came up with five rules number one uh you must list 10 books of course not Olive's Barbaric 7. I don't know what she's thinking there. Number two, uh, your choices must be from the 21st century. As far as I could tell, the oldest book on her list is from 2011. Uh, you, so you can have an extra decade, but it has to be the 21st century. So we're not talking your favorite fiction books of all time. We're talking your favorite fiction books from the century we're living in now. Uh, uh, rule number three, it's one that she followed herself, although she didn't lay these things down as rules, and that is no canonical classics. So even if you read uh, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe for the first time in the 21st century and loved it. You still can't use it on this list. Uh, rule number four, your number one choice must actually be your number one choice. Like Olive did, you can, you can float all the others all the way around creation, but this is a rule that I have followed for a long time on my book blog, Steve Reads. At the end of every year, I do a uh, best and worst books of the year in all the genres that I read. And I always tell people every year, I've been doing it forever and ever, I tell them that the rankings aren't stacked, but number one in every category is the best book in that category that I read. And I want that to apply here as well. So you can you can wander all around creation for numbers uh, 10 through 2, but number one has to be your favorite fiction book of the 21st century uh, so far. Uh, and the last rule is the trickiest one of all, but I thought, if I can do it, you can do it, and it adds a little spice to the tag, and that is that one of your top ten must be linked in some way to the top ten of the person you saw this from. So either Olive's video, if you saw that first, or mine. One of your top ten must be linked in some way. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same book. It could be the same author, the same type of book, the same subject matter, the same location, whatever it is. You'll find a way. There has to be, we want, we want to create a living, organic daisy chain of connections between these. Because the century is young. By now, this early, only 2020, we shouldn't have complete disconnect. There should be some kind of chain of continuity. We've all been reading the same books, for Pete's sake. Uh, so I thought, I thought that now that we've imposed the fascistic rules, I would give you my top ten. Starting with number ten, which is my link with Olive's video, The Interestings, by Meg Wallitzer. An absolutely fantastic novel about a group of friends and the, the, the changes that time works on their relationships. Just amazing. Once upon a time, I would have said that it was utterly beyond the abilities of 21st century writers, even practice writers like Meg Wallitzer, to write anything that could be considered a spiritual descendant of the group by Mary McCarthy. But this book 
more than qualifies. Uh, then number nine is Tiger Man by Nick Harkaway, which is a, a weird and ultimately very touching story about a, an older man who has been battered and seen everything. He is currently finding himself in this story on an island that is literally sentenced to death, an island that for economic, for ecological reasons is dying. And he encounters a young boy who is a living encyclopedia of pop knowledge and who immediately starts mythologizing him and has been mythologizing everything around him for his whole young life. And I don't know, reading Tiger Man, I often wonder why Nick Harkaway isn't better known. Uh, it, will, it will utterly enchant you. Uh, then number eight is Percival Everett by Virgil Russell by Percival Everett. And this is an author that not enough people know. I have praised him to my, uh, my fellow critics for over 10 years now. And uh, the author's name is Percival Everett. And the name of the book is Percival Everett by Virgil Russell. And it's a novel about a, a man who goes to visit his father and realizes that his older father is writing a book about him. Which introduces narrative complexities right there with the unreliability of memory, with an unreliable narrator, with personal stakes in the matter. And those are multiplied, they're doubled and tripled by the fact that then that, we are then reading a story about that story. So I, I loved it, absolutely loved it. Uh, I don't have a copy. Someday I will have to find a copy and, and give it a, another try. Uh, then we have number seven, You Lost Me There by young Rosecrans Baldwin. Uh, a terrific novel about a, a man whose uh, wife was losing her memory and prompting herself, f trying to fight that process by writing a collection of cards, of note cards, observations, uh, things she has to remember, things she thinks are important, whether they're real or not. And he encounters those cards. Uh, and what results is this intricately folded piece of, origa of origami about memory about what memory is, especially in relationships. Just just wonderful. Uh, then number six is A Book of American Martyrs by Joyce Carol Oates, which I think may be my favorite thing by this author th that she's ever written. Now granted, in between the time when this video started and right now, she's written a new book. <laughs> but even so, The Book of American Martyrs uh, deals straight on and with, with amazing literary virtuosity with the subject of abortion by following the, sub, the, the narrative plot lines of a slain abortion doctor and his killer, and the, the beliefs and the backgrounds and the personal histories that feed into both those life stories. Just amazing. One of the only Joyce Carol Oates books that I can unqualifiedly recommend to anybody. Most of them have a kind of uh, inner parlor, insider baseball feel to them, where I, I, even if I consider it to be really good, a book to be really good, by her, I often can't just say, here you go, I recommend this, uh, unfortunately. Uh, don't quite know what that is. Probably it's, it's a reflection of the fact that she's been writing for so long and has written so many books that to a very large extent she's probably writing to herself at this point. But Book of American Martyrs didn't seem to me to have any of that. I think it's a classic. Uh, then uh, number five is The Lesser Bohemians by Amor McBride. A weird, stylistically daring novel about a graduate uh, a drama student who falls in with a charismatic older performer uh, and that is an old story of course as old as Svengali and even older than that but uh, it's really well done and it's only one of the things that you would go to the Lesser Bohemians for you would also go to it for the aforementioned unconventional virtuosity I, many many times especially in the 21st century unconventional literary virtuosity on the part of an author usually is a stand-in euphemism for I'm going to pull any kind of selfish crapola I want to do and you're going to have to venerate it. And in this case, that's not true. So I, I, was, uh, I was extremely pleased. <laughs> and I think you will be too. It's a little bit strange to start off, but I, it, it'll grip you pretty soon. Uh, then number four is The Tiger's Wife by Taya Obrecht, which was hardly needs any introduction from me. It's been widely praised on BookTube and on Goodreads and on the larger literary world. But it is very, very good. It is weird strange, it's dark, but it has moments of guffawing comedy as well, and they are beautifully done. All of the moments are. There are a couple of moments of unbearable, multi-layered heartbreak at the climax of the book. But even a couple of pages before some of those moments, there are still what amounts to physical comedy, and it's done really well. <laughs> so, uh, then number three is Epitaph by Mary Doria Russell. This is a historical novel of hers, in some ways a follow-up to her novel Doc, uh, which was about Doc Holliday. 
And this is her novel about the gunfight at the OK Corral. Talk about a subject that I have seen done many times. I have. And I've also seen it done many times really well. Um, but never like this. Never like this at all. This book was haunting, mythological, just beautifully done. I have been reading this author. I think I've read everything she's ever written. I've never seen, never read anything that got to me like this book did. Uh, and then number two is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, who was just inevitably snubbed for the Booker, uh, the Booker shortlist uh, because she's a white woman, which is a, a very sad state of affairs. It's a very sad reflection on how far we have let this go, these social currents go in the 21st century, that we can all just know the reason why she didn't make the Booker shortlist. And there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing you can even say about it. <laughs> uh, that she, she didn't make the Booker shortlist because she's white. And that's terrible because the mirror and the light is almost certain. I haven't read all of the books on the, the long list or the short list, but the mirror and the light is certainly one of the best books that is nominated, that was nominated for the long list. Certainly. I would be willing to bet. I don't think I've read all the books on the short list, but I'd be willing to bet that it's head and shoulders better than almost all of them. And it's a shame that, that the, the Woker Prize, that the Booker Prize, is nominating and pushing books all the way to the end based on non-literary things. That's, that's a shame. But nevertheless, Wolf Hall, one of the most widely praised novels in modern memory, and deserves it. Absolutely deserves it. Many skeptical readers who hate hype and hate bandwagons, as much as I do, have gone to it and come away saying, okay, well, I might not like the hype, but that was brilliant. And they were right. <laughs> I, I uh, encountered Wolf Hall very early. I encountered it from an excerpt that was in a, in a literary periodical and thought even then, if the rest of the book is this good, there's nothing that it, it will have the world before it. And uh, I recently reread it, and I, I reread it in, in conjunction with reading The Mirror and the Light, and it holds up. It holds up enormously. Uh, and then we get to uh, my number one pick, uh, which could change, of course. The 20th century, the 21st century is still young. Uh, but my number one pick is by Daniel Levithan, and it's Two Boys Kissing. Allegedly YA, although I didn't see much. I mean, some of the protagonists are high school students, but I didn't see it much as a YA novel. It's a gay novel uh, the, in which the, the, the gayness of the small group of main characters is investigated, but it's also watched. Their, their gayness, their, the troubles they have, is also watched by a chorus of of dead AIDS victims, of men who died during the first wave of the AIDS epidemic, and never got to experience the freedom that even the most restrictive of the kids in this in this novel have. They never got to experience that. The only way they get to know it is to watch the adventures of this, these kids. And I, I, when I realized that was the gimmick of the plot, I thought, oh God, that is incredibly maudlin. There's virtually no way you're going to be able to pull that off. And Daniel Levin does. Uh, so it is utterly moving. Of course, the, the degree to which it moves you will probably depend uh, something on your own personal experiences. But for myself, I had tears standing in my eyes at, at, for the last 60 pages of the book. Just tears. Uh, and that is rare for fiction. <laughs> so so those are. I will list those books down below. Even if they're not your cup of tea, I strongly recommend them as 21st century reads. And that is the My Favorite Fiction Books tag. Uh, and Olive didn't tag anybody, and I'm not going to tag anybody. She didn't tag anybody because she didn't think she was making a tag. And I'm not going to tag anybody because I want to tag everybody who reads 20th, 21st century fiction. Sit down with your list, sit down with your Goodreads, make out a list, and tell me your favorites. And, if you dare, try to link one of those favorites to one of my, to one of my favorites, or to one of Olive's favorites. I'll list both of them, uh, so that you can link to one or the other. But anyway, that's my tag for Tag Tuesday. It's yet another weaponized tag because no one is safe. <laughs> but I'm going to wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.